Last Thursday, Essential released an update to their camera app for the PH1. This update added auto HDR so you don't have to manually turn HDR on or off anymore, especially if you're not sure when to even activate it. The update incorporates a new HDR algorithm that improves performance, capture speed, and scene rendering. Auto HDR and Flash have also added yellow indicators to let you know when it's in use. Over the last few days, I've taken a few shots with the new update and wanted to do a quick old review of its results versus the likes of an iPhone 10 and a Pixel 2 XL. Two phones that excel in picture taking, but how does the essential hold up? I don't know. The first thing I noticed here is a difference in white balance. While both phones actually produce great shots, the Pixel 2 XL has a more natural look overall compared to the Essential. It's not by much though, and it's also not something I'd even notice if I wasn't doing a side-by-side -side comparison. At 100% crop, you can see that the Pixel 2 XL offers deeper blacks and finer detail. The second shot here is again mostly about the white balance. As I flip flop through the shots, you'll see the Essential exhibits a warmer overall picture which kind of yellows it, as the Pixel 2 XL looks a bit cleaner. All in all, they're still both pretty good, and at 100% crop, the detail between the two is pretty even. But the Pixel 2 XL again offers more detail. Take a look at the car in the background and the salt residue that covers the side. In this third set of shots, the Essential overexposes a bit versus the iPhone X. That overexposure washes out the street sign which makes it more difficult to read. And you'll also notice that the shadows aren't as pronounced as they are on the X. The brickwork in the building also lacks the detail that the X gives. In this comparison, the X shoots warmer than the Essential just like the previous set I just showed. It's evident in the brickwork as it looks redder than it should be. The Essential is the more natural looking shot and the detail between the two is almost identical. At 100%, you can see the difference in photo warmth between the two. I do prefer the Essential's photo over the 10 and if you're curious, this picture is ice that's formed over a bunch of coax cables in this apartment complex. In this next set of shots, the Pixel 2 XL is definitely the brighter photo, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a better one. Both pictures provide excellent color and detail, and I think the Essential actually portrays a better representation of true color here. But I'd chalk this one down to personal preference. At 100% crop, the detail is a tad more pronounced on the Pixel 2 XL, but it's not by much. In this set of inanimate portrait shots, the Essential does a good job of separating its focus on the subject and adding bokeh in the back, but the 10 does some really great work as well. The statue has excellent detail in addition to the blurred effect behind it. Now, taking portrait shots is different for both. The iPhone 10 requires you to be really close, whereas Essential wants you to be further back, which is the reason both shots came out looking a little different. Unfortunately, this was the only portrait shot I took during my testing, and it's something I think I'd really like to dig in on in a future video. In this first set of night shots, the Essentials photo came out really soft. The car in the foreground lacks detail and so does the laundromat sign behind it. Overall, it's an okay shot, but it doesn't compare to the Pixel 2 XL. In this next set, the difference between both shots is obviously apparent. 
The white balance is so warm on the essential, and the Pixel 2 XL's photo is much more appealing to the eye. Granted, Chicago City lights are almost always yellow, and in a way makes the essential shot truer to color given its lighting conditions. At 100%, crop detail is on par with both phones in the foreground, but is actually better in the back with the essential. In this last set of night shots, the Essential and iPhone X look fairly similar to each other. The biggest thing I spot is that some of the lights get blown out on the Essential, causing a halo-ish effect, but other than that it's pretty solid. At 100% you can see the detail is a bit better on the 10 here and here, but I also noticed a ton of fringing going on on the iPhone 10 at this railroad crossing sign. Not that the Essential doesn't have some of its own, but nowhere as much. At $500, the Essential can manage to take some pretty good shots, especially when compared to a Pixel 2 XL that costs $350 more, or an iPhone X that's double the price at $1000. I hope this isn't the end to Essential's camera updates, I'm sure it isn't, as it's always nice to own a phone and have a company continuously improve on its device. And even though it's not the best camera on the market, it produces some excellent results at its price point. I read this article yesterday on The Verge that talked about how the Essential phone has sold less than 90,000 units. I believe the actual number was 88,000, which is really low considering the heavy hitters, you know, the iPhones and the galaxies of the world. But it's encouraging to me that despite these lower numbers, Essential is still continuing to progress. And as long as it keeps moving forward, as long as it keeps staying active with the community, updating its software, I can see them gaining a loyal fan base. Hopefully they continue. Thank <laughs> you.